Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well today. This is Thursday Talk where I give you some thoughts on a chapter that we're reading for a particular week out of the year. This week we're reading Proverbs chapter 8. Last week we read uh, Proverbs chapter 7 and it was a little weird. It talked about this woman and how she was bad, how she was trying to lure this guy into her bedroom pretty much and and eventually it, it led to his death. So we talked about that woman. This week we're also talking about a woman, but she is significantly different. This week the woman that we're talking about is wisdom. In this video I'm going to share with you a couple of the positive things that I got out of chapter 8 and I'm also going to do the Proverbs challenge. If you didn't watch last week's video, I talk about what the Proverbs challenge is. I encourage you to watch that um, and it'll help you understand what the Proverbs challenge is and why I'm doing it. Just like in chapter 7, the author gives a voice to the thing that he's talking about. Yes, last week the chapter talked about this woman who was trying to lure this guy, but that represented sin. And so we have a voice for sin, and we know what it sounds like. This week, we have a voice for wisdom, and we know what wisdom sounds like because the author writes it in a way that wisdom is talking. By doing this, I think the author makes a really, really good point. Wisdom and sin are both vying for our attention. The question becomes, which one's easier to listen to? Which one's easier to follow? A lot of times sin is, it's sneaky and quick, and before we even know it, we're wrapped up in sin. Wisdom is more calculated and informative and oftentimes takes longer to get better at, but in the long run, it is better. So starting in verse four, we start to get this dialogue from wisdom. Here are a few things from this chapter that I thought would really, really be good to talk about and will help us be more like Jesus. The first thing I wanna talk about is verses six through eight. Listen, for I speak of noble things, and what my lips say is right, for my mouth tells the truth and wickedness is detestable to my lips. All the words from my mouth are righteous. None of them are deceptive or perverse. It's nice knowing that wisdom is never going to do us wrong. It's never gonna tell us a lie or even a half truth. Being able to have confidence in something that's naturally good is good for the soul because you don't have to worry about, well, when is this going to fail? In sin, you eventually know it's gonna catch up to you. And so you start worrying about that. Wisdom isn't really going to catch up to you. You're trying to catch up to wisdom. You're trying to get a hold of it. So knowing that it's good is, is just a comforting thought. The second thing that I want to talk to you is about verse 13. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate arrogant pride, evil conduct, and perverse speech. Fearing the Lord is kind of a weird concept because we, we view God as this loving God. We're not supposed to be scared of him, are we? When we think of getting scared, usually it's from like a haunted house or a scary movie. So what's the deal? Well, we, we fear God not because we're scared of him, but because we respect him. At Impact, one of the lessons that we listened to was about a guy who had to put the rooster in its pen. But he was scared of the rooster. And so when the rooster got out, it kind of flogged him. And so he ran inside and told his dad. And his dad was like, hey, son, you're going to have to put that rooster back where it goes. The son was scared. He's like, I don't know if I can. The dad was like, listen, this is how I want you to take care of the rooster. And he showed him, this is what I want you to do. Now, the boy was still scared of the rooster, but he was also scared of his father, in a sense. He didn't want to disappoint his father. He didn't want his father to get mad at him for not listening to him and not obeying him. That's kind of how our relationship with God is like. He is our father. We need to respect him. And when he tells us to do something, we need to be confident in that what he's telling us to do is the right thing. And that when we do it, we are going to be glorifying him. Or the, the, the rest of that verse is, don't be prideful, don't do evil stuff, and don't say bad stuff, which is just good advice in general. The third thing that I want to talk to you about is from verse 22. The Lord acquired me at the beginning of his creation. Wisdom has been here for a really, really long time. It's a pretty big deal. Now, sin was there soon after wisdom, but wisdom ultimately has won through Jesus. Earlier, I said that Proverbs could help us be more like Jesus. But Jackson, Proverbs is in the Old Testament, and we're supposed to be New Testament Christians. Yes, I agree. But wisdom surpasses time. 
As I said, it's been here forever. Jesus likely studied these same Proverbs, and it helped him teach the way he did and present his sacrifice the way he did. So I think we can still read these Proverbs and get a lot out of it. All right, moving on to the Proverbs challenge. So um, you're supposed to pick a random verse, and I, I understand that. I'm actually going to pick verse 32. And now, sons, listen to me. Those who keep my ways are happy. So the first thing that you're supposed to do is decipher, okay, is this about character, relationships, or words? I think verse 32 is about character. Why? Because it's it's calling us to be wise. We're supposed to keep the way of wisdom. That way we can remain happy. I also think that the way the author writes this chapter, it could be relationship. We're supposed to have a relationship with wisdom. The way that wisdom talks to us in this chapter is, is having a discussion with us, and we need to have a relationship with wisdom. That way we can build it. All right, the next part of the challenge is I'm supposed to ask myself, when in my life have I seen this to be true? I would say for the most part, I'm happy. Happy is a weird emotion because it's very circumstantial. There are definitely times when I'm not happy, but for the most part, I am happy. I do my best to make sure that wisdom is something that I am making decisions with, and the decisions that I make usually make me happy. The second question that I'm supposed to ask is, who has been a modeler of this truth? Hmm, who has been a modeler of this truth? I have, I have two sisters, Audrey and Maria. They're, they're both excellent people that represent this verse, um, but Audrey's working, so I'll probably get to call Maria, see if I can. Um, she's a great study of the Bible, she's a great Christian, and I know because she focuses on stuff like this, she's wise and happy. All right, so the third thing that I'm supposed to do in the Proverbs Challenge is call or text that person and let them know what impact they have had on me because of this verse. So I'm gonna call Maria. Hey, let me put you on speaker. Hold on. All right, say something. Hello. Can you? <laughs> What's up, Maria? We're doing something called the Proverbs Challenge, and. You, you did, you did good. Thank you made me think you. of you. So. Do you have anything you want to say to everybody? Stay safe out there, y'all. Stay safe. That's it. Okay. And I love you, everyone. Okay. They all love you too. General, and I can't wait to see everybody again. <laughs> see you, Maria. All right. That was a nice conversation. Um, Thank you for watching this week. I encourage you to try the Proverbs Challenge. I encourage you to be wise and seek wisdom and grow in it. Build your relationship with it because I really do think it's going to benefit you. And don't be afraid to, to call or text a person about how they've impacted you. Like I said last week, it'll encourage you, it'll encourage them, and it'll build your relationship in Christ. Thank you for watching this week. Know that the doors at Southside are always open unless they're locked. But if they're locked, I'll let you in. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you soon.